project management for freelancers. You know you need it or you wouldn't be watching this video right now, so kudos for you for watching, but you likely don't have it in place yet, which is also a shame moment for you because this is something that every single freelancer needs, especially if you're a creative freelancer. You have some sort of art you're creating, whether it's photography, videography, graphic design, music production, maybe you're a writer and you are offering those freelance services to someone else for money. You have to have project management in a place, especially if you're creative. And the reason is those details of where you are in a project will bog you down and suck your soul away quicker than anything else. The faster you get this sort of thing into place in what I call an external brain, so that now you're no longer thinking about these things. You have an external brain like Trello, which is what I'm going to show in this video. You have this keeping up with all of those minute details that bog you down as a creative. Now, the result of having this in place is going to be that you now flow through projects faster than you ever had before. Clients are ecstatic because you're no longer dropping the ball. They're referring other clients to you, which means you make more money. And at the end of the day, your art is better because you can now focus on creating art instead of managing project details and trying to remember all the crap that you're just dropping the ball. And so if that sounds good for you, this video is absolutely something to watch. So this is our beautiful Trello board. And as you see, every good project management system template should have a cute, adorable little puppy at the background just staring at you. If you don't love puppies, you're a soulless person who I don't want watching my videos, so go away if that's you. Also, I just noticed my shirt looks like a bunch of stars, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna remove my video from this, and that way you can focus on the template and not my star-spangled shirt that's just twinkling in the corner. So this specific template is something known as a scrum board. I'm not going to use that word anymore because that's nerdy business jargon. But if you want to read a really good book, it's called Scrum Princess. It's like 10 pages fully illustrated that goes over this sort of concept. And it's kind of adorable, but it's like the simplest way to learn this sort of methodology. But it's really put into four specific columns. I have two extras here, the templates in the backlog, which I'll get into in a second. But it's really just four columns. It's super easy. What do I need to do? What am I currently doing? What am I currently waiting on, either from someone or for someone? Maybe I'm getting revisions. I'm waiting to, for someone to give me revisions, or I'm waiting for someone to send me files. And then done. This is things that I've already done. And you're simply moving cards from one section to another as you do things. It is dead simple. Now, the templates area, this is just an area for your templates to live so that you don't mess them up and accidentally delete them or accidentally use these as client cards. But let me show you how these are used. Inside of a template, there are a bunch of sub checklists here, and I'm using checklists from my own business, Good Fortune Media, which I'm offer podcast production services. This is just one of my businesses. And when I get a new client, I create a new card from this template. So I just hit that blue button on the top right, and I call this the client name or the podcast name or some name that I can easily identify who this belongs to. So for this example, I'll just use my own podcast, Six Figure Creative and put that as the client name. And I do wanna keep all four checklists. That's the entire point of having the template in the first place. So I'm gonna hit create card. And now within this, I have the steps already laid out that I need to do for this client from start to finish. And I can literally mark them off as I'm doing them. But before we get to that, let's, let's look at something now. We wanna make sure we have them in the right column. This is a brand new client. They've just paid their deposit. Now I consider them an actual client because money has been exchanged. This is not someone just offering lip service and saying, I'd love to hire you. I wanna work with you. They said, no, I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is. I'm gonna pay you a deposit, which is what I always recommend, collect a deposit. And now they're on my calendar. They're in my queue to work on them. So now they're in my to-do area. So the first thing you do with any new client is you put them through your onboarding process. You do have an onboarding process, correct? Hopefully, if you don't have an onboarding process, make sure you go download my free onboarding guide at sixfigurecreative.com slash onboarding. This is like a 20, 25 page PDF that goes through every single step in my onboarding process and you can take it and adapt it for your own onboarding process. Again, that's just sixfigurecreative.com slash onboarding. It'll also be in the description below. But this is the steps that I walk you through in that process. Client agreement sent, client agreement signed, onboarding form complete, and so on and so forth. So this is the onboarding phase. So this brand new client, by default, is going to be in my onboarding process, which means they're not in my to-do list, they're in my doing list because I haven't actually sent the client agreement. I haven't done any of these things yet. So the first thing I'm gonna do is send them my client agreement. If you don't have a client agreement, Make sure you have a client agreement that gets signed ahead of time. Again, that PDF that I just linked to in the description has a full breakdown of how to create your own client agreement. So the, I sent them my client agreement. That's done. 
At this point, they need to sign the agreement. They need to complete an onboarding form before I do anything else. So now I've done my part. So I'm now just moving to the waiting list until they get those two things back to me. I don't have anything to do. So I can go move on to one of my other tasks. Once they've sent me those two things, they have, they've gone through and they've signed my client agreement. They filled out my onboarding form. Now there's something that I have to do. And that is complete a client profile. If you don't know what that is, my onboarding guide goes over this stuff, but I may not have time to do it right now. So I'm going to put this on my calendar. So put the dates. I'm going to put it for Wednesday at 1130. Sounds great. I'm going to hit save. And then this is off my plate. This is now in what I call my external brain. I don't have to think about this. I don't have to look at this. I don't have to worry if I'm going to let this fall through the cracks. I'm going to get a notification on my phone from Trello to remind me one day before, because that's what I set it as, and then remind me when it's due that I need to start working on the next thing, which is going through that assessment and creating a client profile. So now on that day, it's now, let's just pretend it's July 21st at 1131 AM. I can now go over to doing. I can start actually doing the task, creating the client profile for throughout the day, however long that takes me. And then I mark that as done. Send the email to the client. I'm ready to book the kickoff call. Boom. Now I'm waiting on them to book a kickoff call. It's all on their plate. I can mark that as complete, by the way. I have done that thing. So let's just pretend now that the client onboarding checklist, all this is done. Boom. We're done with client onboarding. Now we're into phase one. Again, this is podcast production that I'm offering. You may offer photography services. You may offer graphic design services. Maybe you're making a music video for them, a logo for them. You're doing a full branding package. You're a music producer and you're recording their album or their EP. So your phase one is going to look different than mine. I actually like putting things into phase one, phase two, phase three, or step one. Those are just the overarching things. So for me, it's phase one, pre-launch. What's before we can, what, what do we need to do before we can actually launch the podcast? Phase two is the actual launch process. And then phase three is kind of like growth and maintenance. So this is where I want to stop and show you one more interesting feature that you should be using in Trello for project management. And that's something that I call a breakout card. This right here, by the way, this is a card, a Trello card. You can put attachments to it. You can add due dates. You can add sub checklists. You can add labels to keep up with certain things. You can even use labels to show that, hey, we're in the phase one. We're in phase one. And now I can see no matter how many cards I have in here, I know who I'm in phase one with. But I'm going to hide the checklist items for the completed onboarding checklist. And I know I'm in phase one. So the first thing I need to do in phase one is create the podcast art for this podcast. This is where we differentiate between process management and project management. This right here, everything I'm showing you is project management. We're managing the six figure creative podcast project. But there's also processes involved. To create podcast art for a new podcast, there's a process that I follow for my clients. Now, an easy way to keep up with this is a simple Google document or an Evernote file. So I'm just going to show you a quick example. This is a Evernote file for phase one pre-launch, and it has create podcast art as my first step. And in here, there are several sub steps. So choose your design style, create a mood board, choose the designer, collaborate with the designer. These are all the step-by-step -step processes for this specific project. So what I like to do is go into phase one pre-launch, which for you is whatever phase one means for you. What's the first steps you go through with your clients? And I have this first checklist item here, create podcast art. There's actually multiple steps in there. So how can we manage this for this client? The way to do this is hit the little three dots on the right and hit convert to card. Now create podcast art is its own thing. So in here, there's something we can do by opening the card. We want to make sure we know which client this is. So I'll just hit six figure career, six FC for six figure creative. We go to checklists and then from our templates area, there's a template for create podcast art. I'm going to add that checklist to this specific card. And now we are working on, let me move this. We're working on podcast art for six figure creative. This is the thing I'm doing out of this whole project with tons and tons of to do's to get this thing done from start to finish. I'm pulling out one specific task and putting it into the doing column. And from here, I can say I've, I'm working with a client to choose the design style. I've done that. I'm waiting on them now to create a mood board for me. So I'm going to actually move this to waiting now and so on and so forth. You see how this is working now? I have this specific task that I'm moving around to doing and waiting and doing and waiting. And eventually this is all done so I can move it to the done column and that's out of my hair. And then we can go to the next step in the process, create podcast intro. 
I'll split this out. I'll convert to a new card. And now we have the create podcast intro for this client, Six Figure Creative. And we can load up another checklist, either create one from scratch with step one, step two, step three, and so on and so forth until we finish all these things until we're done with this project. Now here's where this backlog area comes into play. There will be times where something is a task that eventually needs to be done, but doesn't need to be done quite yet. An example could be a podcast trailer. For my clients, not every client needs or wants a podcast trailer. If you don't know what that is, it doesn't really matter, but you can think of something in your own freelance business that you do for some clients, but doesn't need to be done immediately. Maybe it's way after the project's done. Maybe it's eventually, maybe you're not sure if you'll ever get to it. In this case, we can split this out into its own card. We can say, create podcast creator for six figure creative, and we can simply move this over to the backlog. And eventually we can get to that. If we wanted to even put a date on it, we could put a date to where we may revisit this conversation. But this backlog is a great area to keep those tasks that you don't want to be bogged down, but you don't want to forget about them either. So anytime you get a new client, it gets simple. You just create a new card from the template, client name here, create the card, move it to the proper area. And if you want, you can even put a label on it. Let's use uh, orange for onboarding. And as you add more and more clients, you can start to see the power of being able to stay on top of things. Now here is one more area to keep things as efficient as possible to make this external brain your ally instead of your enemy. One thing that I always encourage people to do is on the card, every card should have a next step with a due date attached to it. So even if we're waiting for a client, there should always be a due date for us to follow up. So maybe if we're waiting for the client to sign an agreement, we've sent the agreement, we're waiting for them to sign it, it's great to just have a date a few days in the future to where we can go in and follow up with that client to make sure it didn't fall through the cracks, it didn't hit their spam folder, they didn't get busy, so that the client is always moving the project forward and you're not waiting on them forever. Now, if this specific template is interesting, and you want to use it for yourself, you can literally just go to sixfigurecreative.com slash Trello. The link is in the description below. And the original template that I pulled up, minus all these cards that I just added, will be in there. And you can actually fill these in and make it work for your specific situation. I would encourage you, first of all, for your main template for your new client, make this make sense for your specific business. Every single step for your onboarding checklist, every single step for each phase you put your clients through, so there it is. That's my stupid, simple project management system for creative freelancers. And if you can simply move cards around from left to right and create checklists from step A to step Z, then you can make this work for you. You can adapt it for whatever needs you have. You can adapt it for whatever niche you're in, for whatever service you offer. This can work for you. So if you want this template, just go to sixfigurecreative.com slash Trello and get the Trello template that you can just adapt to your specific needs. And if you can take the time to put this all into place, to make this work for your business, this is an investment back into your creative self, back into your business to not only get time back, but to get mental bandwidth back and to make projects run more smoothly. So let me know in the comments below this, are you going to be using this sort of system in your business? And if not, why not? Is this too complicated? Does this not make sense for you based on what you do? I'd love to know. So that way I can make another video that's more relevant to you.